What's up guys, it's your boy Damone and welcome back to another New World video. Today we're going to take things up a couple of notches. As I was initially intending to do a beta review video, and I'm sure those, plenty of those are popping up, but I realized since they recently announced yesterday that they're basically delaying the game for another 30 days, we are in a unique position to share our thoughts and our opinions as a community to help see the changes that we want to see in the game since they're taking the extra time. So in today's video, we're going to talk about seven changes, seven, that I'd like to see buffed, improved, reworked, enhanced, so it's an overall better playing experience. And at the end of the video, after you guys watch all the stuff, make sure that you guys, if you agreed with the reasons or the things that I want to see change, make sure you mention them in the comments. And if there's things that you personally would like to see improved, changed, added, etc., make sure you add that in the comment box below as well. So that way, if and when Amazon sees this and they read the comments, they can see that these are things that we have to work towards together as a community. Before we get into this, let me just preface the video by saying that I absolutely fell in love with the game, still going through withdrawals, super duper depressed, crying and dying inside when I found out that the game was delayed because uh, it's just rough. But again, I understand why they delayed it, but these are changes that I definitely want to see. First thing that I think needs to be improved is heavy armor penalties need to be added to the game. Now, as much as I love heavy armor, every MMO that I've ever played, I've always main tanked, I've always been a tank, it's just what I do. When I play MOBAs, I play support, typically a tank, it's just how I roll. However, I don't feel that being able to wear four pieces of heavy armor and one medium should afford you the same benefits as someone who's a true tank. And if you're wearing or dressing as a true tank, there should be some penalties required. So they try to enact this with like slower mobility, right? Because your dodge window is a little shorter, which makes sense, right? But if you're wearing heavy armor, you should be wearing heavy armor. So things that I would really like to see improved here is an increased weight penalty. So even if you are just wearing four pieces of heavy and one medium, you're still considered a heavy armor and you suffer the penalties accordingly. Mainly just because without a heavier restriction, pun intended, you're able to get away with murder. Case in point, we had a couple of mages in our guild. Shouts out to Stephen Ray G and shouts out to Seth Fear. These guys literally just would run into the middle of enemy opposition and siege wars and just dominate these guys. And they couldn't get killed. And they were still built with like a full intelligence build, allowing them to deal as much damage as possible. Counting on the fact that the bonuses from wearing a certain amount of pieces of heavy armor with one medium was absolutely busted. So implementing things and or making stricter armor requirements if you're going to be wearing heavy armor should be a penalty that we should have to consider when building our class and I understand that this is not the easiest thing to do especially when you're trying to give your player base as much freedom as possible but that is the beauty and the joy of creating your own kind of custom class is having to counterbalance or really think about the pros and cons of wearing certain armor classes and or using certain weapons. And with the way the game stands right now, it doesn't really matter. Just put whatever damage or stats you're going to put into, whether it be all strength, all intelligence, and then just put on heavy armor. And that seems to be the end all be all. Now, the next thing I, I would like to see improve is going to be the faction armor. Now, not necessarily in a stats or a special abilities point of view, but in terms of gear score. Now, for those of you guys who don't know or haven't had the experience of playing with the faction armor or the level 60 faction armor in the game, the faction armor in the game, if you buy it all, will give you a base score of 550 gear score, which unfortunately, because that gear score is so high, ultimately negates all of the progression up to that point meaning that it almost renders crafting gear useless because you could just buy faction gear, right? Instead of spending the time or investing the time in the crafting, which kind of detracts and takes away from the whole crafting system. Like, why would I buy crafting gear when I can just get faction armor and it's a lot easier to get? So what I'd like to see happen here is a reduction in the gear score with the faction armor, right? Because of course we can have like legendary faction armor that's almost impossible to get later, but that's a topic for another conversation. But seeing the faction gear score, especially at level 60, reduce
reduced so it's more in line with your progression pushing you more towards crafting enhancing you know focusing on talent skills and things of that nature and or doing dungeons i think things like that would make more sense case in point being the entry level dungeon once you guys get between 55 and 60 is the dynasty shipyard with isabella and empress zo which starts at 55 right so I think that the faction armor as a transition point should be somewhere around that gear score to encourage you to start doing the boss arenas like the Spriggan Arena, the Siren Queen, and things of that nature. So everything is more in line with the actual gear score and progression instead of just feeling like what we felt like when we got into the game, which was let's just get faction armor and then we'll figure out how to get to gear score 600 from there, right? Which felt kind of forced. So in overall smoothness, I think some adjustments, maybe even a reduction in gear score uh, on the faction armor overall, I think would be a great improvement to see as it would streamline and or give more incentive to actually crafting gear that's actually useful or feels useful at least as you're going through the game. And since we're talking about boss fights, all right, <laughs> this is one thing that I, I, I definitely, definitely, definitely would like to see. And that, my friends, is harder boss fights. Now, there were a couple of fights in the game that I thought were a lot of fun. Uh, specifically, one with Medusa, which was great. Uh, it was a cool fight, interesting mechanics. And there was another fight in Garden of Genesis with this boss that literally just one-shotted us, which was also amazing. Outside of that, though, a lot of the boss mechanics felt really, really simple and easy uh, to the point where it was probably just a combination of everybody wearing heavy armor <laughs> and heels being a little bit OP, kind of overtuned right now. But overall, I would like to see just harder boss fights, boss fights with more mechanics, uh, especially like with the Siren Queen. We went into the Siren Queen and she was just singing and it was just so cool. Ooh! Oh my gosh, she looks so um, but then she literally did nothing the entire fight but throw a spear, kill our backline. And as tanks, we were just kind of sitting there waiting for something to happen, waiting for the next boss phase, waiting for, you know, something crazy to happen, but it never did. Now, with my assumption here, I'm assuming that they, they could potentially be introducing harder boss fights, so like heroic and mythic for my wild players out there, or harder variations of the same dungeon, which would fall in line with the fact that, okay, first phase of the boss or first type of that boss is going to be easy and then when you fight the heroic version or the legendary version or whatever the hell uh, then it's going to be extremely difficult but i will say that a lot of the fights in the game felt very beta-esque meaning they weren't all the way done there was a start some didn't have voice lines so they might just not have been complete yet and at launch we might even see completely different boss mechanics and that's something that i'm really hoping on but i would like to see the boss fights more impactful overall because Lieutenant Thorpe kicked our goddamn ass at level 45. And then once we got 55 plus, everything else was pretty much just a walk in the park. Now, as we move on past the boss fights, I will just say this is just going to be a quick once over. Obviously, less lag. <laughs> so we're going to need more optimization with reason number four. And just because you guys remember in the castle sieges and the battles that you guys have done, there were probably points in time where you felt like you were just standing still. I know we did. And you guys can see that in the footage here above. But the thing is, it's just obviously the optimization is going to come. I know they care about their product more than we ever could. So I know that's a fix, but that's definitely something that I would like to see impacted and improved uh, before the game comes out especially again since they're taking another month now these last two things guys are definitely things that i want to see for sure all right but they're also things that i don't think is something that they could just wave a magic wand and add to the game especially not in 60 days uh, these are two things that are just going to be a more overtime thing but i wanted to mention them just because i know that there's probably a lot of you out there that might want to see the same thing um, but i think this is really really important to the overall ecosystem of new world so the first one is going to be anti-healing abilities. Currently with the hatchet, there's one that reduces healing, I think, by 30% or something like that. Uh, but in large PvP situations, specifically 50v50 versus Siege, it may or may not be the best choice on offense or defense depending on what role you're playing. If you're a mus musket hatchet user, 
could make sense, except if you're on defense, you're probably standing on a wall and the hatchet range is not that crazy, okay? Or if you're on offense and you're pushing a line, unless you're on a flex team moving behind the enemy team, you're probably not going to be leading in with a hatchet. You're most likely going to be going in with a hammer, a spear, or a two-handed axe, just so you can create space and distance and control the line so your back line can push up or your whole team or army can push up as well. So with that, as they continue to introduce weapons, for those of you guys who may or may not have heard the leaks by now, there's supposed to be six weapons coming. Two-hand sword, crossbow, halberd, void gauntlet, pistol, and one-hand mace or two-hand mace. I can't, I can't remember if it was a one-hand or a two-hand. But with those six weapons, within those core abilities and or if they adjust abilities of the current weapons, I would like to see more anti-heal or heal mitigation abilities so healers feel more impacted in PvE and PvP. Now, the reason why I said PvE too is just because I would like to see more uh, mechanics that we'd have to work with um, when we fight these bosses, hence why I asked for harder bosses earlier. So then maybe we could start playing with like a cleanse mechanic or this will make, you know, arcana stations or potion making more plentiful because now you need potion, cleanse potions or things of that nature to pay more attention to the mechanics that are inherent in the dungeon. But as they continue to release new weapons and or scale and or balance weapons, I would definitely love to see some heal uh, block or heal counter or some kind of uh, mechanic that allows you to apply a little bit more skill or put quite a bit more pressure on your healers other than damage and last but not least is more monster variety all right now i will give it to them um within the last few months of the alpha test that we were a part of we definitely started to see a lot more armor stuff more armor skins weapon skins cosmetics all kinds of craziness right so i would like to see that kind of ambition applied to the actual overall monster pool because as you guys know the monster categories are typically like lost like the fallen um and then you have like some other ones and that's pretty much it and the monster models are pretty much the same minus like a new hat or like a new weapon or a new spear so on and so forth now i will compliment the game because once we got to ebon scale reach there was like two-handed like samurai looking dudes and like earth spikes and all kinds of craziness but i would definitely like to see more and more monster variety especially as the lands open up now the reason why i said like i'm not expecting this to happen over the course of 60 days is just because i know this is a design process and uh <laughs> we had the opportunity in the game of of seeing the burning sands if you guys took the time to journey up to ebon scale reach up to the limit to where that you couldn't go past you can look through and see like uh the burning sands which i'm assuming is the next new region coming it's like desert and dead trees and craziness so i know we're gonna get a lot more mob variety there but from the ground up from the beginning i would like to see more than just zombies and pirates right i would like to see a, a, a larger variety of bosses I, I would like to see bosses and dungeons have their own look instead of just being giant variations of smaller mobs and i think that that's definitely a thing that they're already keeping in mind and that's definitely a thing that's probably going to change over time Amarin excavation a year from now will probably not be the same Amarin excavation that we experience in the beta and or will experience at launch but this is something that i would definitely definitely like to see with that guys um that covers up the seven things that i definitely definitely would like to see the first five of course i think are manageable and definitely could be added within the 60 day window that uh you know it takes to go there because it's just some you know some fine tunes some tweaks maybe some mechanic shifts you know some things like that and then from there uh the last two of course is just something that i would like to see over time what I invite you guys to do, let me know in the comment box, what are some changes that you guys would like to see happen? Now, it doesn't matter the time frame. If you guys want to specify, if you guys want to say, well, I want to see this in the next 60 days, or I want to see this in the next year, anything that you guys would really like to see, because let's be honest, like all of you guys that are here still watching the video, you guys played New World, you fell in love with it. It's more fun than you've had in a long time, and you definitely want to see the product succeed, right? I'm the same way. I love the game. It was great. If it was up to me, I'm like, look, Amazon, just put the goddamn game out. Let's suffer through it. I don't care. There's so many half-baked games out here on the market anyway. It's been stuck in early access for 15 years, and they're still not done. <laughs> So why not do the same? And I understand they want a quality product, but at the same time, you know, I'm like, look, man, just let me play. Just let me in. 
But let me know what changes you guys would like to see over the course of time. And like I said, as Amazon, you know, because I'm sure they're paying a lot of attention to uh, how the game is being received so they can make adjustments accordingly and make the best product they can. Hence why they delayed the game. But let's use this as an outlet to kind of get that information out there. But anyway, guys, thank you guys so much for tuning in. If you guys got any questions, comments, concerns, as always, let me know in the comments. I'd be happy to assist. And we will see you guys in the next video. Peace.